Ihr habt keine Chance. Aber in drei Tagen seid ihr hier raus. Wir gehen. Keine Sorge. Ich werde hier sein und euch durch niemands Land zu unseren Stellungen bringen. möglich zu essen. Nein, 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 behalte die Packung. Ihr habt mehr als genug. Erinnert ihr euch an die italienische Wurst? <lacht> Kaffee und die Mädels. Ah, hier wisst ihr, wie italienische Mädels sind. <lacht> Freundlich, einladend und so schön. Was denn, Was glaubst du? <lacht> Scheiß gut aus. Sie ist das schönste Mädchen auf deinem ganzen Bett. Ihr Name. Ihr Name ist Julia. Go. Great, I'm taking them across next time. Good work. Get this to headquarters. Tell them there's a big attack coming soon. I'll see you in three days. Same time, same place. Yes, sir. Now get going. Good luck. Oh, 
If you ever leave me, how my heart would ache. I want to hug you, but I feel you break. Bonjour, Capitaine. Voulez-vous arrive? Oui, merci. Allez à la ville, OK, Capitaine? Oui, oui. Merci beaucoup. What'd I tell you? Another lousy frog. Look at his uniform. He's Belgian. Same thing. <laughs> Hey, what's a snail eater like you doing around here anyway? Jeez, will you look at him? He looks like he just stepped off of some fashion parade. <laughs> hey, absolutely, Alphonse. I agree. <laughs> This guy stinks. C'est un autre colonne extrêmement cher. Et dire que je le gaspille pour un crétin comme toi. What do you say? I don't know something about his cologne. Jeez. This guy's giving me the willies. Just <laughs> quit your belly aching, aren't you? Over here. Oh, Reed, why you snail eater? And I hope I never have to smell you Boy, again. Fire, fellas. Owen, thanks for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buongiorno, sir Capitano. Sempre la stessa, eh? Quella lì. Questa? Sì. Bravo. Chiunque sia la ragazza, È una donna fortunata. <ride> Siamo. Buongiorno, signora. Sta bene, spero. The other one's flowers are much better than yours. Umberto? Besides, she put Giulietta a bar of soap. Umberto, vai via. Oh, yeah, he's really a terrific kid. I, I really like your room, Cindy. It's very beautiful. I'm so glad. Come here. Did you miss me? Yes. Your uh, mission, was it dangerous? But I don't think of danger. All I think of is... is you. 
I I worry about you. I have uh, fear. Fear? Yes, fear. You're so adorable, so sweet. Giulietta, tua madre ti vuole. Sì, papà. Good evening, sir. Certo che un bell'uomo è anche molto generoso. Se fossi lei mi darei da fare, giovanotto. That was a uh, pretty good trick you pulled, Capitan, huh? The ambulance, remember? Yeah. Hey, Ernie Hemingway from Chicago. Indiana Jones. Yeah. Most people call me Andy. Andy. Ernie? Thanks. You, uh, speak darn good English, huh? I should. I'm from New Jersey. No kidding. Hey, that's the Croix de Guerre you got there, huh? Medaille Militaire. That means you're wounded. Hey, uh, did it hurt? It always hurts. Oh, gee. I like to win a medal. Any medal. Well, don't be too hasty. You might get yourself killed. Oh, no, I won't get killed not driving an ambulance. Not enough action. <laughs> Hey, uh, what's up with you, buddy? You look like you've been hit by a truck. It's my girl. Your girl? I got this girl. I'm crazy about her. And everything was going great. And while I was away on my last mission, some guy starts to move in on her. What the rat? He's giving her flowers and presents. He's really romancing her, and I think he's getting somewhere. I'll tell you what you gotta do. You gotta beat him. Beat him? Yeah, evaporate him. Make him a memory. I don't even know who he is. No, it doesn't matter. No, no, see, see, you gotta compete, you hear me? I mean, no holds barred. You know, he gives your girl flowers, you give her more flowers, huh? He gives your girl presents, you give her more presents. I mean, I'm telling you, buddy, hey, dames, <laughs> they really go for that kind of thing. You sure? <laughs> yeah, positive. Heck, it's what I always do. Hey, love is like war, Indy. To the victor go the spoils, huh? Hey, you gotta try some of this uh, local crap, huh? Knock the enamel off your teeth, huh? To love and war. Love and war. Beautiful. Oh. And in Pamplona, Fiesta time, they were in the bulls right through the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go there someday. Hey, now wait. <clears throat> now remember, you have to compete. Compete, huh? Right. You gotta beat this other guy out of sight. Out of sight. Huh? Right. Now, now, what are you gonna do? Hemingway, we're now, gonna go in and we're gonna win. Hey, hey, listen. I got a buddy that works in the commissary, huh? Now, if that rat is your girl, a bar of soap, huh? My buddy will get you two bars. Two bars. Two. Hey, right. anything you need. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> You're a pal. Hey, it's my pleasure, old man. <laughs> hey, and if you do meet that rat... I'll beat the crap out of him. Oh, and I'll help you. That's right. That's right. 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 Ich 
Ich schwöre es. Ich verspreche es dir, wenn da sein stimmt. Zwei besser. Eins muss ich noch wissen. Das ist wichtig. Wie geht's, Julietta? Nobody there. Could be a trap. You want to call the plan off? I still think it's worth taking a chance. It's your life, Captain. Yes, sir. What's up? You seem jumpy. I'm not jumpy. I just... I just want to get back. Strain getting to you, Captain? No, sir. I... I just got my mind on something else. Sir? Hey. I thought we might go for a walk. That is, if, if you'd like to. That would be nice. For you. Thank you. They're beautiful. this present. Thank you. It's, it's soap. Yeah. Three bars. I, I must put these in water. Don't be too long. so much to be with you. But you are with me. Alone. Because I'm crazy about you. I don't think you should say such things to me. Why? They're true. And I just... Nothing. If you only knew. You're right, that was very dangerous. But see, don't you see that that's my life? Daily, I duel with death. My darling, I'll be going away again. On another mission. And I have to warn you that... You, you could be wounded. Wounded? Or even... My darling, in this big, crazy world, for two people like us, there's so little time. So little time.
say it. Oh, yes, a thousand times. You told her what? I told her I was going across the lines again and might get killed. It really worked. Oh, I don't believe this. What, are you crazy? But she kissed me. What a kiss. I practically melted. You lunatic, that's the worst thing you could have done. Why? 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 Why, she asked me why? Because now she's thinking about being without you, you dope. See, she's gonna give up on you, forget all about you, and then this other guy's gonna move right in. Really? Yes, really, lunkhead. He's a rat, remember? So he's gonna soothe her, and he's gonna comfort her, he's gonna put his lousy arms around her, and kiss away her lousy tears. Rat. <laughs> Dirty Yeah, rat. didn't I tell you? Oh, boy, Andy, you really fouled up. So what do I do? <sighs> what do you do? Well, you win her back is what you do, huh? You retake the ground you just lost. Fix bayonets and charge. Oh, I don't know. <sighs> well, suppose no, that I... Quiet. Yeah, let me think. Yeah. <sighs> mm. ah, I got it. What? You write her a letter. Huh, I mean, you write her the greatest darn love letter that was ever written. Oh, I can't write letters like that. Come on, the heck you oh, can. The last letter I wrote was to a Arabian. And it was to a guy. Okay, uh, listen. All you have to do is write down one true sentence, huh? Yeah. Just, uh, you know, write the truest sentence you can. You do. <laughs> You're a writer. You told me. I was a reporter for a time on the Kansas City Star. Well, that's writing, isn't it? Listen, dumbhead. It's got to come from you. Now write. Huh? You hear me? Write. Hey, hey, hey. Put a lid on it, will you? All right, there's a guy here trying to create. Uh, come on, just read me what you wrote. My darling. Yeah, it's not bad. Beauty, strength, youth are flowers but fading seen. Duty, faith, love are roots and evergreen. Yeah, sounds pretty good. It's from an Elizabethan poem by George Peel. Hmm, what's it called? A Farewell to Arms. Hmm, Farewell to Arms. That's a good title. No, 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 no. See, that won't work. I, listen, you mustn't quote or write out of your head, you know? I mean, you, you just gotta cut all that crap out, and you gotta write out of your nerves, mm -hmm. not your muscles. All right. Start me off. All right, look, just the first sentence of it. First, there was the sunrise. And then there was your face. And I love the sunrise, but I loved your face better. You got that? Uh. All right. The sunrise made me see your lovely face clearly, and it was good. I smelled the bright smell of your hair, tangy, tangy, like pine needles in the Abruzzi. Abruzzi? Tasted, clean taste of your beauty, light and clear, like yellow frascati. Yellow for Scotty? And it was good. And I knew then that I loved you truly. And it was better than good. <laughs> Ain't it great? Huh? That'll get it for sure. Department starts in 72 hours. Then the main attack goes in. Are they ready? As ready as they'll ever be. Then move.
Giants and Juliet to look beautiful. The other one plays cello too. Umberto. He plays long duets with Juliet. Umberto. Special dinner. Will you come? <laughs> Thanks, I'd love to. Ah, music. Music is so wonderful. You play, Enrico? I took piano lessons when I was a kid, but I didn't like it very much. No. Oh, such a pity. But I do play the flute. Oh, the flute. Oh, that's so spiritual, so, so, so romantic. Well, actually, I play primitive flutes. Primitive? Like Peruvian, Chinese. Oh. Well, but the flute, the, the real flute is so beautiful. Music. I mean, come on, where the hell are you going to find a flute around here? The 23rd Regiment's got a pretty good band of borrow. Oh, now you're rolling, old man. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Flauto, Capitano, certamente. What's the problem? No mouthpiece. No mouthpiece. Look. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Capitano, <laughs> così. Provi lei ora. <laughs> Preferisce un trombone, Capitano? Oppure una tuba! <laughs> See, the flutes I'm used to, you blow down, not across. <laughs> Now what am I going to do? <laughs> well... Beats the hell out of me. I mean, there's nowhere around here you're gonna find a Peruvian or a Chinese. What in God's name is that? It's a saxophone. A saxophone? Don't be a dope. Looks more like a kid's toy. No, it's a soprano saxophone. I fooled around with one of these in basic training at La Havre. That is the most ridiculous looking thing I've ever seen in my life. Only a lunatic would want to play. <laughs> She'll be putty in your hands. Buongiorno, signore. What are you doing here? I was invited. Invited? You were invited? Of course. It's Julia's birthday party. You'd better come in. Where do you È di là in salotto, in carne ed ossa. Cosa stai dicendo? Chi è arrivato? Il capitano americano. Certo, l'ho invitato io. L'hai invitato tu. L'hai invitato tu. Oh, santo cielo. Eh, ma cosa ti prende? Niente, va tutto bene. A parte il fatto che io ho invitato quell'altro. L'altro? Sì, l'altro. Tu hai invitato l'altro? È una vergogna, ne vado all'onore della nostra famiglia. Oh, è Giulietta! Come mi va Giulietta? Voi avete fatto cosa? Li abbiamo invitati tutti e due a cena questa sera. Oh mio Dio! Mi avete rovinato tutto! Tutto! Ok, buddy, this is where you get off. È tutta colpa tua, sei, sei una stupida! Mi avete rovinato la vita! No! È tua la colpa, imbecille! Come potevo sapere? Tu non parli mai con me! Ma, mamma, ma 
che cosa possiamo fare? In primo luogo non avresti mai dovuto sposarmi. T'avevo avvertito, non mi hai ascoltato, maniaco sessuale. It's okay, I don't need you. Uh, need me? No, 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 so be it, will you? Scram. <laughs> Scram? Get the heck out of here. What do you mean, get the heck out of here? I was invited. Invited? Sure, it's Julietta's... You! you. Rats! Oh, me? Dirty two-time and rats! Judas! I own it! I hope you like pasta, Capitano Enrico. Yes, I do. And you, Tenente Ernesto, you also like pasta? Yes. Pasta's good. Pasta is very good. Pasta is extremely good. As a matter of fact, I love pasta. Well, I adore it. Always have. So, Enrico? With pleasure. Ernesto? With joy. Oh. Napolitana, my favorite. These tomatoes, the soul of your wonderful country. So plump, so juicy, so red. Italy needs soldiers. Bravo! <laughs> Bravo! You want some more? Yes. Yes. And you, Ernesto, a little more cheese? Uh, oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Julieta, I was wondering if... Sensitive. He has a soul of a true artist.
renegade! Don't get yourself this silver! Over! I haven't even started yet! She's my girl! She's mine! I saw her first! Okay, Jones. Okay, you asked for it. This is man's stuff. No holds barred! Fine by me, Hemingway! From now on, this is war! Yeah, war! War! Starlight and hella cold sun. Sounds of the wind. Hella by the moonlight. I'd like to buy them all. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> this wonderful fragrance reminds me of you. <laughs> and someday soon they're gonna build Beauty, strength, youth are flowers, fading scene. <clears throat> uh, duty, faith, love uh, <clears throat> are roots ever, uh, ever. Excuse me. This is crazy. It's getting us nowhere. I agree. What do you suggest? I suggest... I suggest we go see Julietta. Together. And? And... <clears throat> and let her decide. What do you say? Whoever she chooses gets her. Yeah, and the loser butts out. I'll start booking your ticket, Cream Yeah, Puff. start packing your bags, you big age. Hey, where's your sister? Is she at home? Getting married. Married? Well, who to? Alfredo. Alfredo? We have been knowing each other since we were little children. 
He is such a lovely boy. We will be happy together. But, but, but Julieta, I, I mean, I thought we had... Indy, Ernesto, you have been so kind. It's been all so very nice. And when I think about you in the future, it will make me feel so happy. How'd it go? Oh, pretty good. They're shipping me out tomorrow. Oh, great. How are your legs? Oh, well, apart from 227 holes and a ton of Austrian shrapnel, I'm dandy. At least so the doc says. Well, you got your medal. Yeah. First American to be wounded in Italy. Yeah, I guess it's something. <laughs> hey, listen, if uh, you're ever in Chicago, look me up. I will. I will. I've been thinking about going to the University of Chicago to study archaeology. Hey, Ernie. A pack. No matter what happens, we'll never chase after the same girl again. <laughs> It's a deal? It's a deal. You'll be shipped to uh, Venice. Oh, and uh, Nurse Sophia will accompany you. Venice. That sounds promising. Good luck. Thank you, sir.
congratulations, Captain Diffles. Your performance has been outstanding. Thank you, sir. In the mountains, you brought over more German deserters than anyone. Before that, in Palestine, you did brilliant work in the capture of Damascus. It is a record second to none. Are you completely recovered from your wound? I still get a little tired. Actually, I'm 100% though, really. I can't wait to start my new assignment. Your next assignment is North Africa. North Africa? But there's no war there. On the contrary, the Germans are doing everything they can to stir up trouble there. And if the French should lose control of North Africa, it would be calamitous. I can't believe this. There's nothing there. Why me? You speak Arabic. And frankly, Captain, someone has to go. Thank you. Any idea what Casablanca's like? That's what I figured. Sir? Yes, sir. You can go in now. Again, I am delighted they sent you, Captain. A man of your caliber is rare here. Thank you, sir. So my assignment? That you will learn when you reach Fort Carmes, here. At the edge of the desert. With most of our troops back in France, the situation here is delicate, even precarious. The rebel tribesmen are growing in numbers. Their audacity is increasing. And why? Because someone is supplying them with fresh arms and ammunition. Your mission is to capture some of those stolen rifles so we can see who has made them. And perhaps find a serial number so we can trace their origin. Tomorrow at dawn, you will lead a patrol to Fort Carnis. No one must know that you are in French intelligence. When you know it. And your new identity is Captain Duval of the Foreign Legion. I have here your papers. But you must be careful. The enemy here is everywhere. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Henkel, ready for your orders, sir? You're German. So are the rest of the patrol, apart from a couple of Poles and a Lithuanian. This is the Legion, mein Kapitän. All the nationalities of Europe. I suppose we better get started. Mount up!
Give me your water bottle, Sergeant. My water bottle? Oh, no, sir. You don't want it. What? I mean, you don't need it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cut the crap, Hank. I'll hand it over. That's an order, Sergeant. <sighs> what is this? Schnapps, sir. What? Schnapps. 100% proof. This is lethal. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't like it. Oh. Davis, he'll hide his men. Are they friendly? Does that answer your question, sir? No, no. to say. Nothing to say? You take my country by force. You exploit my people. You degrade my religion. And you have nothing to say. Let us try to touch of a thousand cuts, Haji. They are not worthy of so noble a death. Take them out and shoot them. Wait a minute. So, you have something to say after all. No. I just thought before we die... The last cigarette? <laughs> you French are so romantic. Give them a cigarette. Here, take it. Mouth's a bit dry.
the bag on that horse you stole seems to be full of German communicate to the Bedouin. You did well to get through, Duval. Very well. Did they tell you we've been under attack here for the past ten months? No. No one's told me a thing. Least of all about my assignment. Your assignment, yes. Sante. Sante. Rather than stealing German communique, you would have been better off if you'd gotten a rifle so we could discover who is supplying them with fresh arms and ammunition. Don't you mean the Germans? No, not in this case. It could be anyone, anyone at all. Free traders, Egyptians, Italians. We are lost unless we can find the source of these guns. Colonel, it looks like he's already done it. These were in the saddlebags of the horse Captain Duvel was riding. Look, sir. Serial numbers, rifle, ammunition, it's all there. Captain, you've surpassed yourself. Only a year five minutes and you've already accomplished your mission. The arms, Captain Duval, are French. French? Yes. Imagine. Our very latest type of rifle. More deadly, more accurate than anything we'd known before. You must report back to HQ. There, they will compare these numbers with the records they have at headquarters. And then we shall be able to identify the source. I suggest you leave as soon as it's dark. Dismissed. They told me you were exceptional. They did not exaggerate. But you have exceeded your reputation. Thank you, sir. He will have to be extraordinary if this is true. These serial numbers are from arms delivered to Sheikh Kamal. Sheikh Kamal? But he's one of the most loyal of all the council. <laughs> if loyalty can be measured in the amount of gold we've paid him, but uh, can it? Well, if Kamal is a traitor, Gentlemen, our position here is serious. I regret, General, that it may be even more serious than you imagine. May I remind you that our arms in Hydran are guarded by a detachment of the Legion, which raises a disturbing possibility. That a Legionnaire is the traitor? No, impossible. In war, as in love, nothing is impossible. I would it were otherwise. Who is in command at Hydran? Colonel Bonnet. Oh. Bonnet. As a man of honor, I would trust him with my life. It would appear that we must send this young man to Hydran immediately. But how is he to get there without arousing suspicion? Uh, true. It's slightest hint, my dear fellow, and your life won't be worth a fig. What about that American woman? She is touring there with a legionnaire as escort. Excellent. American woman. A distinguished American writer is at present visiting North Africa. In Paris, she has done important work, founding hospitals for the wounded, raising money for widows and orphans. The President of the Republic recently decorated her with a legion of honor. Her name is Mrs. Edith Wharton. And the novelist. Well, you know her. I know of her, yes, sir. Is she due to visit Hadran? No, but it can be arranged. Uh, Captain Duval, your appointed liaison officer to Mrs. Wharton. You will travel with her to Hadran. There you will uncover the traitor who has been selling arms to the Berbers, and you will take appropriate measures. Good luck. Sir. Miss Warden. Henry Duvall. You're American, surely. In New Jersey. It's a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. How delightful. Happy to know you, Captain DeVoe. Well, watch your step here. Thank you. Okay. Oh, no. I hate to ride by myself. Come on, sit with me, please. There. That's so much nicer. My name is Henry Jones. 
I just named myself Indiana after my dog, so my friends call me Indy. <laughs> then so shall I. Indy, I like it. And you must call me Edith. All right. Edith. Tell me, Indy, how do you come to join the French Foreign Legion? That's quite a story. With a girl at the beginning of it, I hope. Something like that. You don't want to talk about it? No, I don't mind. I just hate to bore you. <laughs> bore me? With the tale of unrequited passion? It was unrequited, wasn't it? <laughs> Begin. I'm all ears. Well, it was in Princeton. I was still in high school. And spring break was coming up, and there was this girl. Her name was Nancy. Nancy and I were... So then I asked Vicky to marry me, only she wouldn't. She wants to be a writer. She just didn't want to give up her independence. So that's when I joined the Belgian army and I just left London. I don't know, I guess it's always like that. I thought, like, like it starts out okay and then everything seems to get messed up. Not too long ago, there was this girl in Italy and I loved her, I really did. So did this pal of mine. We fought over like cats and dogs. We were both crazy about her. And she went and married some other guy. What makes people fall in love? And why do they always fall in love with the wrong people? I don't know. All I do know is there's no controlling it. One falls in love. One feels pain. One also causes it. And then other people are hurt. Don't look sad. Sometimes love can be wonderful. And with the last person you'd ever dream of. Well, that's true. In Paris, I had... I had an experience. Do you mean sex? Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been talking for hours. I've never done that with anyone before. I enjoyed it. Because you're a writer? No, because I like you. Now, may I have some more tea? You cold? Maybe a little. God, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. The oldest Kasbah's in Morocco. It was built around the same time as Versailles. Those sunken gardens, mosques, baths. There was nothing like it in the whole of North Africa. How do you know all this? Well, I've always been interested in archaeology. When the war's over, I'm going to become an archaeologist. You'll make a fine one. You think so? I do. You have passion. This is so great. You're really sweet, you know that? Thank you. I like you too. You okay? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Shukran. Shukran. 
My name's Lowell Thomas, U.S. Government Information Service. How do you do? Oh, terrific, thanks. <laughs> they told me I'd find you here. Hey. General Lottie's guys at HQ. Boy, do we hightail to catch up with you. I'm not sure I understand. Well, I'm writing for American newspapers, and uh, you're on your way to Hadron, right? Well, the idea is that I go along with you. You go with us? Right. Hi. Good to know you. Captain Duvall, French Foreign Legion. Can I see your papers, please? Sure. Famous American author in Darkest Africa. Could be a terrific story. I am not here to promote myself, Mr. Thomas. No, sure, but it's great human interest. Folks back home could really go for it. And I'll show how much we're doing to win this war. Uh, Mrs. Wharton, look. I won't be in the way. Anything I write, I'll let you see it. If you don't like it, it's spiked. That's a promise, OK? Very well. Oh, great. You won't regret it. You won't even know I'm here! The fact is, Captain, the war in Europe's a stalemate. That's why I went where the action is, Arabia. I was in Arabia earlier this year. You were? Say, did you ever run across a crazy Britisher called T.E. Lawrence? Ned Lawrence? Sure. Known him since I was 10 years old. You don't say. Maybe you could fill me in on his background, a few personal details, stuff like that. I was just telling Captain Duval about this British officer in Arabia. Turns out he already knows him. Anything, doesn't matter how small. I don't think so. His name's T.E. Lawrence, and he's leading the Bedouin in a guerrilla war against the Turks, wailing the tar out of them. I don't think I've heard of him. Oh, you will. By the time I'm through, the whole world will have heard of him. He'll hate that. Are you kidding? He'll love it. Believe me, pal, I know. So will the public. He's a hero, and the public needs heroes. All it takes is a little help. Is that your job, Mr. Thomas? To provide the public with heroes? Or villains, partly yes. What's wrong with that? People aren't interested in ideas. It's, it's personalities they get excited about. So you do your best to excite them? Sure. Don't get me wrong, Mrs. Wharton. Uh, I don't tell lies. I wasn't suggesting that you did. But how far would you go in writing about, what did you call it, the personal details? As far as it takes, I guess. How far is that? Into their homes? Maybe. Their bedrooms? Maybe. That's what you do, after all. What I do? Sure. <laughs> I've read your books, Mrs. Wharton. I admire them. You show up social hypocrisy. You get underneath the facade. You write about men and women in their most intimate of moments, and you don't stop when the bedroom door closes. Where's the difference? The difference, Mr. Thomas, is between literature and journalism. One is fiction, and one is invading a real person's private life and exploiting it. Well, I guess you're partly right. Only partly? Yes, because I believe, I truly believe, that the public has a right to know. And I believe, as truly as you, that there are some things which are private. And unless we are barbarians, they must remain private. Colonel Bonnet at your service, Mrs. Walter. Delighted to meet you, Colonel Bonnet. May I introduce my officers, Captain Morel, Lieutenant Cordier, and Lieutenant Villard. This is Captain Duval and Mr. Lowell Thomas. Monsieur. His Excellency, Sheikh Hamal, is ready to receive you. Sir, Madame.
Mrs. Edith, your presence honors my poor house. The honor is mine, Your Excellency. Sir, may I present Capitaine Duval and Mr. Thomas. Please. Your journey, it was uh, beautiful. Everything in North Africa is beautiful, sir. But nothing is more beautiful than Hadrian. That is true. I see that you are most intelligent for a woman. Thank you, sir. I see that you are most courteous for a man. <laughs> Splendid. I look forward to your company at dinner. In the meantime, is my is captain of my bodyguard. He will show all things to you. What is that, Lily? The Amory. Would you care to see it? It's getting late, sir. Shall we? Why not? D'accord. A very latest type. Most impressive. Who has access to this place? Only my officers and the Sheikh's personal bodyguard. Uh, no one else? No one. The Amory is top security. Fine weapon. Sir, you mustn't keep chic command waiting. C'est vrai. And I am sure Mrs. Wotan would like to rest before dinner. Shall we? to be delivered to you personally. Do you have to sign for those? Sign? I've never signed before. It's General Yori's order, sir. Very well. Hello. Thank you, sir. It did not shock you, Mrs. Edith? Shock me? Why should it shock me? It is the custom of your country. We have our customs, too. Our dancing may seem more formal, but it can be equally erotic. Don't you agree, Captain Duval? I guess it depends who you're dancing with. The only shocking thing about custom is if one becomes its prisoner. Explain, please. I mean when manners, rules, conventions become too strong to break. It can lead to real unhappiness. For example, falling in love. I, 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 I don't understand. <laughs> Suppose you love someone, someone outside the normal rules. Suppose you lack the courage to act on it and to do what your heart tells you is right. Wouldn't that lead to unhappiness? Such a thing can never happen in my country. 
No, I'm afraid it often does in mine. I see. <clears throat> the food is not to your taste. It's delicious. The truth of the matter is I'm just feeling a bit dizzy. If you'll excuse me. Too much dancing, girl, no? <laughs> <laughs> Open up. Sorry, sir. No one's allowed inside. Admit Captain Duval to the armory at all times, Colonel Bonnet. Sir.
very good. Well, there you are. We'd almost given you up. I trust you are better, Captain. Much better. Thank you, sir. You just missed a delightful story. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. An unforgettable experience. Tomorrow, I give a luncheon for you to meet some of my people. I bid you good night, Mrs. Edith. Good night, sir. at night. Every other Monday. Thank you. Excuse me, Colonel, I need to speak to you in the council. I have a message. No? Capitan, this is hardly the moment. It's important, sir. D'accord? The library in ten minutes. Secret mission? You are a spy? Yes, sir. I assume you have some proof of this. My order signed by General Yachty. Weapons are being stolen from the armory here in Hydron. Take it to the rebel tribesmen by Haroon. Well, Haroon shall be arrested. No, sir. Not yet. He's not the real traitor. The real traitor is someone who has official access to the armory. Can you prove it? I think so. Have your officers meet me there immediately. You dare to suggest that an officer of the Legion you, would sir. deceive? Bring your bodyguards. But my bodyguards are loyal. Each one of them would die for me. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have much time. Fathom. He drops the rifles down, he replaces the tiles, and he puts the empty boxes at the bottom of the stacks. Then he goes to the storehouse. He crawls through the tunnel, he takes the rifles, and he puts them in the boxes inside the storehouse. During the night, Haroon's men load them onto camels and take them to the rebels. Incredible. No, sir. It's a fact. And here's another fact. Haroon's caravan is due tonight, which means another consignment has just been transferred. But that still doesn't tell us who the traitor is. Maybe it does. When I got out of the tunnel, I was covered in sand. Of course you were. Look. Yes, sir, but you'll notice that this sand is white. Further down the tunnel, the sand is red, a very distinctive red. Now, my guess is the traitor will still have some of this on him. There is no red sand on them. True. But what about in their boots? Have your men take off their boots. Never. This is an insult. Please, Your Excellency, Captain Duval is right. Hey, it's a better. Yalla! Congratulations, Captain. Brilliant work. Sorry, it's not over yet. Not over. But you have found the traitor. I found one traitor. I figured it would take more than one man to shift this amount of rifles in the time allowed. You three, take off your boots. Sir, I protest. If you are wrong, I shall have your head for this. I'll take that chance. Do as he says. That is an order. You will pay for this, Duval. Sir! We haven't seen inside your boots yet. Why, you insolent puppy? No one leaves here until we do. Hey, 
this moment, make time stop, then it would last forever. Except we can't. No. In a little while, I shall return to Paris and you to the war. Shall we see each other soon, do you think? I don't know. Probably not. But after, when the war is over, will you visit me? I want to. Edith. No, please, my dear, don't. You're right, of course. Time doesn't stop. I never before realized what a cruel enemy it is. First time in my life, I really envy my father. If I had a daughter, I'd envy her, too. <laughs> Go now. Please. Bye, Mr. Thomas. I am happy to have known you. It's been a privilege, and uh, I'd like you to know, Mrs. Wharton, that I won't be writing a word about your visit. Why, Mr. Thomas, it never occurred to me that you would. 